What's up, everybody, and welcome back to the Moto One US channel, where today we are telling you everything we know about the new Tesla Model S. Tesla dropped a huge bomb on us yesterday, pretty much right as we were ready to sign off of work, uh, and we have all that information for you and more. Joining me today is the host of the weekly Inside EVs podcast, Dominic Yoni. What's going on, Dom? Hey there. And then Kyle is here as well. You can catch Kyle on the Inside EVs YouTube channel regularly, but he is also the owner, driver, whatever you want to call him, of Out of Spec Studios, which is another great YouTube channel. Uh, Kyle, thanks for being here, man. Yeah, thanks for having me. Sounds great. So let's get right into this. Let me just set the table a little bit, and I'll let you guys go nuts. But yesterday, Tesla dropped uh, information on an updated Model S and a Model S Plaid. So now if you go on the Model S uh, product page on the website, there are three options to choose from. There's a long range, which is going to be $79,990. It's going to do 410, or excuse me, 412 miles of range. There is a new plaid model, which is $119,990. That'll get you 390 miles. But more importantly, it'll do zero to 60 in 1.9 seconds. And then there's the one that really set the internet ablaze yesterday, which is the new plaid plus, and that'll be available later this year. That's $139,000. It'll do 520 miles of range, and it'll match that plaid's 1.9 seconds to 60. There's my starting point. I'm going to put an image of the car on the screen. What were your guys' thoughts, especially regarding the new Plaid Plus model? Apparently, they've taken the uh, Model S and X and made made it versions more similar to the Model 3 and Model Y. Uh, they both have received the same blackout trim all around. Uh, and then the interior as well has been, you know, totally, uh, if it's totally in, in the uh, style of the Model 3 and Model Y as well with this single uh, dashboard. So piece let's across. talk interior in a second because okay. there's a lot to go right. over there. But right now, yeah. I just want to know, you guys are both EV fans. Not that I'm not, but you are both EV evangelists. When Tesla comes out and out of nowhere, drops it in the middle of their Q4 earnings report and says, by the way, we now have a production car that's going to do zero to 60 less than two seconds and over 500 mile of range. What does that mean to you, Dominic, especially as the EV world sort of marches forward? You know, why Why would they re do this during the earnings report and things? That's like a total mystery to me. I've, I know... There were some expectations that he would announce this on, on the call, but he said in the past, you know, they don't make product announcements on, on the call with analysts that they have, you know, during the financial reporting. And uh, so I didn't think that was going to happen there, but it was like actually right in, in the uh, report, in the earnings report. It's like have a new refresh Model X and a Model Y, you know, new new battery pack design and, and just all the, all the particular, a lot of the particulars about it right there. So, you know, I, I really don't know what Kyle, do you have any, any clues why they might do this with this timing? No, no, sh not sure on the timing, but w we can talk about the changes themselves because this is hugely important. Um, you know, Model S has been around since 2012. It's really the car that put Tesla on the map. And arguably, it's been the unmatched electric car since 2012. We've seen uh, Volkswagen Group, BMW Group, uh, Daimler, all of the Germans. We've seen Chinese automakers, NIO, Xpeng. Uh, BYD go after to try to build a car that matches a Model S from 2012 and up to this point very few have been able to succeed. So what Tesla has done now that some automakers have gotten close, Porsche Taycan for example, is they just slap down the gauntlet on their existing platform. The, the, the acceleration is insane. 1.9 seconds to 60 1. is the quickest, yeah, quickest accelerating production vehicle ever. Uh, which right. just sounds like a freaking blast. Can't wait to test that. Uh, but then also some really smart updates as well. We can see a change to the lower fascia up front, maybe to let a little bit more air in perhaps. Right. Um, seems that other changes are minor. I would say the body is the same. I don't think it's any wider than the previous. The taillights are now updated. They call it a homogenous light design, so you don't see the individual bulbs. I believe and, the uh, track is very, very slightly wider, but I'm not certain. I did read sure. that yesterday as I was writing the article. Yeah, I've heard the rumors, but we don't have specs on the width of the car yet, do we? Oh, God forbid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Yeah. I think those two numbers, as I'm looking at them on my page here, 1.9 seconds to 60, but also 520 miles of range in that plus model. That's that's truly incredible. And I'm not one uh, to be hyperbolic when it comes to cars like this, but that's a 
huge advancement. I probably should have mentioned earlier on that of the three Model S's, the long range is going to be a dual motor setup and Plaid and Plaid Plus will be a tri-motor setup, right. uh, which will be really interesting to test out. Hey, but while we're still out looking at the outside for a second, tell me what you think about this. Now, they, they've put the, uh, like the blackout trim on the outside and, you know, I think that works okay for the Model 3 and Model Y, but this is supposed to be like a, a luxury vehicle or, you know, higher, a more premium vehicle. I think they should be color coded to the paint of the car, like the door handles, at least. I, I You're know. showing your age there, Dominic. That is <laughs> really? a whole generation move. You know, us younger guys, Clint probably agrees, blackout trim looks the business compared to chrome, especially sometimes sure. paint match, uh, sure. especially yeah. if it's factory. But it's I hate that I love it, it, but I do. Uh, and also, there's no visual changes. Certainly the new wheels, we've seen Tesla taking this approach to taper off the top of the wheel to a flat surface. Essentially, you can have a larger wheel, but with a flat surface on the outer diameter that decreases the aerodynamic impact of a larger wheel. In fact, it might actually be more aero efficient to have the larger wheel than the smaller wheel because you have a flat surface area going around. Uh, so we've seen some updates here or there, but still I think the standard Model S now is 10 miles less range than the current outgoing model. I think it lost range, gained $10,000. Let's talk about the, the tech specs before we argue about specifics here. This is a brand new interior. There's a lot more work done to this than there was to the exterior. The designers uh, took an off day when they were doing the, the exterior tweaks. But here we have a new 17 inch display, which looks a lot more like the Model uh, 3 and the Model Y. We got rid of the vertical tablet style display, but uh, the Model S retains the 12.3 inch digital instrument cluster. There's a lot more processing power. The colors are supposedly better than before. And there's also a supplemental screen uh, in the back seat. The interior for a technical term here coming from an automotive journalist, looks badass. It, it looks really, yeah, really like cool. It. Can we talk about the other bits of the interior? Because I think, yeah, uh, like Clint mentioned, much. it's totally badass. It's a huge departure from the previous generation Model S. Uh, and I think it is visually extremely pleasant. And personally, cool. I think design-wise, I like it more than the Lucid Air, which was sort of the benchmark of the EV luxury segment for me. What do you, what do you think, Dominic? So I find it still a little, little it's spare, which is okay. Um, I just, there's not a little, I would like to see a little more action or something, a little more movement, you know, like design wise. Uh, and the screen in the back, we're looking at the screen in the back. If you're, That's uh, Imagine leaning forward to play that. It's fun. You have kids in the backseat on road trips while their parents are trying to figure out how autopilot works, like going like this <laughs> up, uh, up playing, you know, Mario Kart or whatever. I love that. So we're looking at this back screen. There's so a couple of points on this really quick. So if you notice, there's two uh, USB-C uh, things below that. And just above the screen, there are two vents. You can't really see them in this picture, but I've, I've seen them in another video. Uh, and I don't know what you guys think about this screen here in the middle. I, I think it's a bad idea. I think they should have one really? screen in each of the back of the front seats. So each passenger would have their own screen because you have two kids fighting in the back seat over who's looking at the screen and both of them have to lean over to kind of be in front of it. I, mm. You know, it's, it's a luxury you know, top tier vehicle, give it two screens. Yeah, so know. is it going to do HVAC controls in the back seat? Is it That's going to the big thing. The functions in the car? That's the big thing. It has to, because currently you cannot even adjust your heated seat in the back without asking the front passenger to turn it on for you. Yeah. Right. I, I think, think it should host some of the functions at the front of the vehicle. And if, you know, two people in the backseat want to play video games, that's fine. I guess my only counterpoint to you, Dom, is we're here from a lot of automakers. They're ripping screens out of the backseat because kids are just using tablets now anyway. They don't really care. Right, so I right. think if this screen hosts some of the functions of the car, kind of like we see in luxury vehicles, Mercedes, Bentleys, things like that, that's kind of a cool double use. And yeah, I want to adjust my fan speed and I want to have my ass warm or cooler in the back seat of my Tesla. So I hope that uh, that function comes to fruition. Two big misses back here. No rear seat pockets, again, from Model S. And uh, what was the other miss? Can't remember, but actually a big win is finally, for the first time in Tesla Model S history, do we have door pockets? This is huge. The, I do want to talk specifically about the steering wheel because as you guys are Tesla fanatics, you know that the car does not have a lot of buttons. It does not have turning stock and things like that that were crazy to begin with. 
and now it doesn't have anything. Right. So they moved the indicators, the left and right uh, turn signals onto the steering wheel. And the big mystery is how the hell do you get the thing in gear? Right. There's no stocks. There's no there's stocks. Yeah. <laughs> because so, it's, it's a smart car. It's Kyle, here's the cat out of the bag. Go. What, what do you want me to say? You want me to talk about how, how, do, you, how, how, do, you, how do you go back up? How do you back up? I, I don't actually know. I think you will either be able to control it with the right scroll wheel in a certain menu, because again, those what? scroll wheels can do anything, no. or you will do it from the touch screen. Here's the problem with any sort of digital interface with Tesla. I've owned three of these. I've put at least 200, maybe plus thousand miles on combined driving Tesla vehicles, probably more. These things glitch out. They're not perfect. Yeah. I mean, every day I was just supercharging the other day and my whole screen went black and I had to reboot my car. So am right. I going to like pull out of an intersection, have the whole thing crash and then have to like say, sorry, my car bricked itself. Let me put it in drive versus yeah, having sense. a hard button for this. So that's my concern with any sort of digital interface. Of course, the interface from the stock is digital, but it's not tied to a screen that's now gone black. So what, what I understand is the car can kind of guess which way you want to go. You, you get in the car, you're in your garage, it's going to guess. And if it, if it has it wrong, I guess it's going to have like the which direction it's decided to go on the screen in front of you, I guess. And then you could, you could on the screen, change that if you, if you say, oh, no, no, I want to, I want to do. And, Hold yeah, on, preparing for launch. <laughs> Reverse. Right. Well, I mean, it has. You can see there's a wall in front of it, so it's not going to drive into the wall, right? So if you, Why you know, do I always have to be the naysayer. I'm supposed to be the nice guy, the happy one that just poses questions here. But put the car in park, put the car in drive. I, I see this leading to disaster, and maybe that's just me not having enough faith in it. But I'm all for advancing the interior of a car with really cool new things. I don't think you have to rethink everything. Um, and I'd a stock or whatever it may be to put the car in drive seems like a worthwhile thing. So here's more important to me about the steering wheel is uh, uh, the steering ratio that you're going to have to have yes, to absolutely. maintain a wheel like this. So first off, Clint, you've driven Ferraris, I'm sure. You know the, the turn signals on the buttons they're on, on the, the wheels? Button. Every they're time right. you're turning, you get them mixed up. First off, that's always annoying because they're on the wrong side. So whenever you're making a U-turn, I, I never get figure out what side to hit. Here's the problem. When you're on autopilot in the current iteration of where the system is right now, uh, if you go to take the car out of autopilot and you're a new driver and you don't know to lift up on the stock or tap the brake, yeah. there's a wall in the wheel that you have to push through. It's a really hard resistance point. The Model 3 and Model Y steering ratio is already so fast that I've been in cars with my girlfriend driving where a getting out of autopilot sends the car into a skid scenario. And I've had to reach over and correct a slide because of it. Uh, this is going to have to have 180 degrees from center point to full lock because you can't go past this. Any kind of hand over hand doesn't work with this wheel. So you can either have an adaptive steering ratio that's speed based or you have a really quick rack. Either way, I'm not sure it's the best solution, but we've heard rumblings of a circular wheel being an option inside EVs discovered this, right, Clint? Uh, well, you gave me the link to it and we'll make sure to give credit as well. I'll put it on the screen as we talk about this because I want to make sure whoever did find this first gets the credit for finding it. Um, but yeah, there, there, is it a rendering, Kyle, of the circular wheel, which leads me to believe that this... Uh, situation we have on the screen right now might not make production i think it's good I, you know at first when it came out last night i'm like this is not going to make a production but now that i think about it and read more and more it looks like it's going to make production it's like yeah and it it's kind of beyond me like so you were saying in you can't go more than 180 like i don't know how you'd let people do more than 90 degrees in this you know so you right. have to have like a variable rack at some time of some kind, you know, so, so it's acts kind of normal, you know, when, within a range of, you know, 10, 20 degrees, but when you start the, you know, it kind of really kicks in the. What it comes down know. to are, are panic situations and drivers that are not calibrated to the new right. steering wheel. It's new drivers in a new vehicle in a panic swerve maneuver. They're going to grab yeah. a wheel that's not there. And it, and that that's where I see the issue. Yeah. Um, and, and so we'll see uh, steering wheel, like Clint, you asked, it was a rendering from the website, I believe in the okay. metadata of the site is where okay. uh, my friend John actually grabbed the photos off of. And uh, that's it looks like a normal steering wheel. 
I th- I mean, I don't know if it's going to be an option. I don't know if the I, but the fact that that rendering exists and made a d- metadata of the website probably mean I don't know. It, it could mean a couple of things. But also, I'm thinking if I'm driving a car with over a thousand horsepower and the fastest model, that's a performance car, very obviously, and it should have characteristics like that of a performance car. You've already talked about how they're going to need to adjust the ratio on that all the way to high heaven. So God only knows how the steering feel is going to be in this car. But if somebody's buying it, do they even care? I, I struggle with that question sometimes because the person who is buying that $140,000 Plaid Plus model might not care about traditional handling in the way I would reviewing a new car. It's what very possible. Say? I'm reading a uh, bit of FMVSS code right now, Federal Motor Vehicle Safety Standard. Ooh, it's look at you. Okay. It says to be street legal, one cannot have a butterfly shaped steering wheel or a fighter jet like joystick. Instead, a vehicle must have a circular wheel of at least 13 inches along its outside diameter. So that just goes to show you right there. Um, who knows? We'll see. But yeah. this car needs to tech all the intangibles the not the stuff on the paper that tesla's always really good at hitting but it needs to tick all of the intangible feeling mm-hmm. of a bank vault this car needs to have a solid yeah. thunk it needs to feel really nice get in any modern mercedes product bentley it needs to have that just sense of solidity to it that every time i get into a tesla i hear like just a little extra reverberation and i'm like ah come on just just the last 10 percent it needs you're right. You're 100% it should, right. It should feel yeah. at least as good as a Taycan, uh, maybe without as much uh, electric motor sound. It needs to feel better than a Taycan. I just did 8,000 miles in one, and it needs to be better. Okay. I don't sure. know if that will happen. In fact, I will challenge you and say it probably won't happen. I but agree. Nevertheless, I am very excited uh, to see this car on the road. Those changes that we all mentioned, we talked a lot about Model S, but they are coming to Model X as well. Uh, The Plaid is going on sale, Elon said, in just a matter of weeks, right? And then the Plus, you can order, but will be coming later on this year. I don't want to misquote myself there. You're right. We have a lot of excitement from uh, from Tesla land. Uh, coming out. And I thank you guys for going over all the details with me. Again, you can find Dominic Yoni hosting the weekly Inside EVs podcast. I'll put a link to that in the description. Kyle is on there frequently and you can check out all of his stuff on Out of Spec Studios. And I will link that as well. Thank you both so much for joining me today. And let's get excited to uh, play with that steering wheel whenever the time comes. Oh, yeah. Oh, steering yeah. wheel try and torque vectoring. Well, <laughs> exactly right. that's that. true torque vectoring on the tri-motors in the back yeah yeah exactly all right thanks, thanks guys